it's this big gigantic couch and every subscriber is sitting on it and we're just like watching TV together and hanging out and I want that to feel this way. Hey buddy, check this out. This is my Marvin the Martian. It's the most comfortable thing on the whole planet. And I'm wearing it because it's like wearing a hug. All right, so you already know that Perp Perp is gone for the whole weekend. So I am straight up Kevin McAllister all weekend. Thanks to some friendly peeps. I have new software that I'm trying, and we know how this usually goes. It's a disaster every single time. I'm going to test this software while watching Deshita Meaning Explained by Bookish Theories. This is one of the two explanation videos that was suggested in terms of understanding Deshita. Now, I'm just going to watch this. And if, it, if I lose the video, lose the video, it's an explanation, not a big deal. Hello, and welcome back to Bookish T Whoa. Theories. In today's video, I would like to talk about Augustis de Chita, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of both the lyrics and the visual masterpiece they passed as a music video. De Chita is a song that, much like the mixtape as a whole, reflects on Jungi, Suga, and Augustis' current mindset and successes, as well as his artistic growth from 2016 to present day. Okay. Billboard D2 interview. What do you hope listeners take away from the overall experience of the mixtape? This is how I've lived since August 16th, 2016. If the previous mixtape focused on telling the past, the new one is about the present. Okay? The title of the song literally translates into great blowing and hitting, and it refers to a specific genre of traditional Korean military music which involves wind and percussion instruments. This musical genre is usually performed by the army while marching in parade for the king. So you know what you have to do the next time that you listen to this song. But in the instrumentals, these traditional sounds are mixed together with modern sounds that belong to both hip-hop and trap. And as it turns out, this fusion of tradition and modernity is also reflected in the music video, which shows us an epic confrontation between the ruthless King Min and the gang boss August D. At the beginning, the video opens with King Yoongi sitting on his phoenix throne and then proceeding to admire the decapitated bodies of his enemies laid wow. out in the courtyard. Now, if you are a fan of K-dramas, you probably recognize the palace. Oh, so they're actually supposed to be headless? Or was that just the previous shot? here because the video was shot at Dejagun Park, a very popular filming location that was featured in a lot of historical dramas throughout the years. The styling for this setting was inspired by a mix of several Korean periods, but one of the major influences was definitely the Joseon dynasty, which, as we'll see in a second, is a major inspiration for the entire plot of the video. After being introduced to the king, the narrative then moves from the palace to the market, where we see a cameo of Jin and Jungkook picking a fight with each other, and we <laughs> meet the character of... I didn't know Will Smith was in it! We see a cameo of Jin and Jungkook picking... So funny. Man! See, even now, paused, I can see Jungkook. But Jin with the little beard? Wait a second. Yeah, wow, that threw me for a loop. King a fight with each other, and we meet the character of the boss, which is the source of the king's future downfall and the leader of the coup that will take place later on. Right off the bat, the difference between these two characters is pretty evident. One is a king, the other a commoner. The first fights for himself, the second fights for the people. But what makes it even better is the way both the song and the video deal with the contrast between past and present. You see, in the lyrics, Augustine introduces himself as a king born as a slave. Now he wears a crown and flies on private jets, but this doesn't mean that he forgot where he came from, because as a matter of fact, he really didn't. 
He was born in a ditch but rose up to be a dragon and he still remembers the days that led him to this point, which is the reason why he lives the way that he does and knows that he has quite a lot to lose. Now, judging by the lyrics alone, you would think that King Yungi represents his present while Auguste is a symbol of his past. But in the video, the king is associated with tradition while the boss is driving a car in the middle of the palace. Yeah. And that is important because... Man, that's almost... That's what I was saying. I was, my theory was that the king is him now and his lifestyle, he's fancy, but the other character was his past and he was up and coming from something, you know, his history. Wow, tradition versus modern. And the car comes out, oh man, so cool. As much like the scar on his face suggests, this contradiction implies that Yungi is both of these people at the same time. On the one hand, he is a ruthless king to his enemies, who challenges the norm and is feared because of that. But on the other, he is still the voice of the people, the boss of a movement that is, that is meant to break tradition with a modern perspective that represents those that support him. In both the song and the music video, this duality is also conveyed with a lot of cultural and historical references. The line, born as a slave but now a king, for instance, is a direct reference to the movie Masquerade, which is a period drama about King Guanghe, who finds a double among the common people in order to protect himself from the constant threat of assassination. The events that we see in the video seem to be heavily inspired by the movie, but as it turns out, the references to this king go a lot deeper than that, because in the lyrics, Auguste compares his flow to the mad tiger Guanghe. You see, Guanghegun was the 15th king of the Joseon dynasty, and even if modern scholars have been redeeming his name by praising his wisdom and strength, throughout history he was known to be a very violent and ruthless tyrant. Since he was the son of a concubine, Guanghe was not the original successor to the throne, but because of his leadership skills and political abilities, he was appointed as crown prince and later on as the official successor instead of his older legitimate brother. Despite he defended his country even after the king ran away, his reputation during his rule was heavily affected by rumors that historians are now considering mostly false. And much like what we see in the video, his reign ended with a coup that happened overnight. Now, even judging by this little summary I just gave you, it's easy to see why Yungi chose this character in the first place. Much like him, Guanghegun was not meant to be king but became one because of his talents. His reputation was consistently tainted by his enemies and even if he defended his country, he was considered a tyrant that didn't deserve recognition. In the video, August D is now playing the tyrant that his haters make him out to be. They wanted a mad king and now they got it. And he's not messing around this time because he's coming straight for their heads. Even if they call him a pup, he's nothing like them and he doesn't even need to flex to prove it because his enemy's pathetic behavior speaks for itself. This is because, much like he anticipated back in Give It To Me, he cannot live like a dog because he was born as a tiger. Now, the tiger is a very important symbol here because in Korean culture it is an animal that represents courage and pride while still conveying a sense of superiority that inspires so I gotta say, all the comments in terms of the depth, I mean, I'm, I'm essentially halfway through this video, this explanation. All the comments saying that Deshita is very deep and there's a lot of layers to it. Yeah, spot on, 100%. However, I do have to go back to my previous comment that I made, and I don't know, I don't think it was about Deshita, maybe it was. Um, but it was about one of my goofy theories and um, maybe it was spring day or I, I don't know. Maybe it was, I don't know. Um, but point being though, you know, you listen to Baby Army, which I'm still totally Baby Army, uh, but you listen to Baby Army with their theories and their, you know, uh, their guesses and everything else, trying to figure out and piece things together. And it's easy to watch that and say, no, 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 you're getting it all wrong. Now you're way off. But you only know that because of this. I mean, let's be honest. How many of us would have put all this together by watching Deshita, the video, and understanding all of the intricacies 
of that storytelling. I mean, this is incredible. And again, I'm only halfway through it. So I have to say, like, this is, this is really, really impressive. But, like, how many of us would have really known that this is what was being said and what was being conveyed? Wow. fear and respect. The tiger is a noble animal that has nothing to share with the dogs that bark for attention. They are just below him, so without any hesitation he just kills them all. What's interesting here is that Jung is not saying that his success made him a tiger, but that he was born as a tiger, meaning that in comparison to his enemies, he is not superior because he's famous, he is superior because that's the way that it is. Now he may be king and he might be a dragon, but he was always a tiger, so while he shoves his past in a rice chest, he knows that he's standing on what it says. Now these lines here are very interesting because the rice chest is a reference to the story of Crown Prince Sado of the Joseon dynasty, who was executed by his own father and died of starvation inside of a rice chest. According to the story, Sado was put to death because he tried to kill the son of an official. But since according to the law the body of a royal could not be defiled, the king had to get creative and find a way to kill his son while keeping his body intact. The solution that he found was to tie him with a rope and seal him inside of a rice chest for seven days. And even if this sounds like a horrible act, this method of execution actually spared the life of the prince's family and saved his legacy. Now, the fact that Jung is a king and is choosing to seal his past in a rice chest implies that he's finding an alternative way to deal with the struggles that doesn't involve a complete erasure. He knows that the past made him the person he is today, and he knows that he needs to acknowledge that in order to maintain his roles. But he's choosing to deal with his struggles privately, saving what needs to be saved and killing what needs to be killed. To a certain extent, we can say that this idea is also loosely portrayed in the video itself, because much like Prince Sado, Auguste is taken prisoner and tied with a rope. Now, Auguste here is the boss of the story, the man of the people and the past that is reclaiming his place in the present. He is the one who was there since day one, and the part of him that people can relate to the most, because all the clothes, the money and the goals the king has in the present are the result of the dreams that the boss had in the past. It's thanks to him and his sick- What video was that? Did you see that? Watch. And the result of the dreams. What is this? I must know right now what video this is. There's two quarter pipes back there. We got some tagging. What? That the boss had in the past. It's thanks to him and his six gang members that revenues go up and Bank PD dances in his studio. He is a genius that became a king because he realized that time is more valuable than money. But to his people, he's not a tyrant wow, that lost touch God. with reality. He is a guide that can lead them to revolution. This idea is perfectly conveyed in the video because when Auguste is about to be killed, the executioner himself is the one who sets him free. Now, this part is very interesting because this scene was actually foreshadowed since the very beginning. If you look closely, the two executioners that we see in this scene right here are played by the same actors that play the butchers at the market. Nice. And this is not a coincidence because, as a matter of fact, they are the very same people. You see, these characters are a close reference to the Baekjang, who were the untouchables of Korean society and were forced to be butchers and executioners because what? they were activities that were deemed despicable by society as a whole. Now, the fact that Auguste is being helped by one of the untouchables implies that his message is able to resonate with people that come from all walks of life. No matter who you are or where you come from, no matter how much people hate you or disrespect you, Auguste will be your voice and he will be your fighter. But once again, this reference goes even deeper than that, because if you look closely, Jung is wearing a necklace that looks exactly like the mask that is used to represent wow. the Baekjang in theatre. This implies that not only he leads the untouchables, but that he identifies himself with them, meaning that even after all he has accomplished, he is still the untouchable of the system that he rules and that still wants to destroy him.
If in interlude Shadow he wanted to be king and in Tony Montana he felt like Scarface, now he is the king and he is the boss. But people still come for his neck no matter what he does. This, however, does not change the fact that he is at the top. But this kind of power also implies a reality check, because by realizing that he cannot get any higher, Jungi also accepts the fact that now it's time to look down and put his feet on the ground. Now, these lines here are very similar to the lyrics that we can find in Interlude Shadow, Black Swan and On. And to a certain extent, this implies that the final confrontation between the king and the boss can be compared to the confrontation between the persona and the shadow. You see, for Jungi not to become the tyrant that people make him out to be, he needs to stand his ground and look at himself in the face. Even if he's the king and he is the boss, he also understands that there is a limit to his greed. And in order not to overstep it, he has to kill the tyrant by wearing the mask of the untouchable. In a way, this is the part of him that the king might have hidden inside the rice chest. That side, that is, that represents the essence of his artistry and that is meant to give a voice to the voiceless. When you are at the top, it's easy to forget why you started in the first place, but Jung is not allowing himself to forget. So, at the end of the video, Auguste shoots the tyrant by using an army revolver. This implies not only that you are the army. greatest weapon he has against his enemies, but also that you are the medium through which he keeps himself in check. Wow. You destroy his haters and you keep him grounded in reality. So next time you feel bad about yourself, stream D2 and give yourself a break. So that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. So I'm curious about something. So the channel is called Bookish Theories. So it is all of this, is this a theory that they have come up with? Or, I mean, it's easy to look at this and say, well, yeah, it's so complex and so complicated that it must be true because all the pieces line up. But don't know if that's an assumption that we can make. I'll be honest, I think, I think it's all there. I think it's true. I think they're right. However, I just don't know if that is a safe assumption to make. One, th one thing that I try to live my life by is the idea, the notion that just because something makes sense doesn't mean that it's true. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that anything that, th that bookish theories is saying is wrong. My question is, is this all rooted in research based on other videos or interviews that exist from Jungi about how this was written and why this was written and what it represents? Is, is this information based on that? Or is this literally just an analysis or uh, theories based on the visualization or the lyrics or, or whatever. I'm really curious about that. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great, great video. And can I just comment on something? Because I feel like I'm, this little description right here is resonating with me. If I remember to do it, I'll, I'll blow it up so you can see it. You know what, maybe I can do that now. So I'm holding control and I'm mouse wheeling. A little hacker tip for you. Hello and welcome back to Bookish Theories. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and my deepest apologies to the Koreans of the world for butchering your language. I tried and failed and tried again and I failed even more and never thought vowels could hurt me and yet here we are. It seems like an innocent, playful comment. Um, I'm sure they were completely sincere in writing it, I believe it, but I have to wonder what sparked that? Was that something that was intrinsic to them that they felt that way? Because they, I don't know, I just feel like there was, and I, I don't wanna say backlash, but like what sparked that, you know? I'm curious. 
And I'm saying that from a position of like, I really do feel sometimes like we forget to give each other leeway or flexibility to make mistakes. I feel like that's, that happens too often now. You know, we get in these positions and we call them out at the buzzword. Oh, I'm about to ramble. Buckle up. I feel like we oftentimes live inside these echo chambers of like-minded people and to an extent that's okay because just like my little sticker says back there on the shelf which you can't see because i'm cutting it off in the camera um just like that sticker says surround yourself with people that are like sunshine or something like that and i do think we have to surround ourselves with the right people but we cannot exist in my opinion in that bubble of like-minded people all the time because then otherwise we would never make progress as people we would never grow we would never evolve um you know like yeah i have my convictions and i have my values but they're also not the same convictions and values that i had 10 years ago or five years ago 20 years ago i have evolved as a person and the only way that that can happen is by having more experiences, and having more um, conversations and discussions, having difficult conversations and uh, making mistakes, allowing mistakes. <sighs> I don't know, that comment kind of kind of hit me. The whole point of this video is me learning what Deshita was about, right? A lot of cultural references. And maybe that's where it all ties back for me. I feel like I'm kind of having this, what's the word? I'm kind of reacting to, you know, if you watched, I had a, a video where I watched Deshita, the, the music video. And I had my theories on that as it was. And then the following video was supposed to be me watching an explanation video on Deshita. I think what happened was, I think I ran out of time. I was really rushed that day. That's what it was. Before I was able to give a theory on what I thought the video was about, I started playing the explanation video. And then I realized just a couple minutes in, like, hold on, you're about to tell me everything and I haven't had a, even had a chance to theorize yet. I don't wanna do that. So I stopped the video, I gave my theory and what I thought would be the story behind the story, the video, um, and then I ran out of time and I never got a chance to go back to that explanation video. Well, the hurricane happened and I say hurricane. It was a, it was a, a little thimble of people, a little thimble of people with loud microphones straight to my ear, you know, would say that it was disrespectful for me to turn off that video because there's a bunch of cultural references that I need to understand. Well, I agree, it's nice to know this stuff, and it's nice to know that, okay, well, Jungi wrote all this and had all this in mind, or so we theorize, I suppose, is the right term. Um, but I have to wonder, you know, did people leave? Did people leave the channel because they thought that I was disrespectful? Is that allowing flexibility for me to make mistakes? You know, like how, how can we expect each other to grow if we don't allow for mistakes when we are overlapping in each other's worlds. Does that make sense? I know I'm totally sideways on this video right now, but I feel like it's important. If you haven't noticed yet, part of my whole thing is growing, you know, like evolving, becoming better. I realize now that I, you probably can't take me seriously because I'm having this deep discussion while wearing a Marvin the Martian hug. This was all just a test video. and I don't even know if I'm going to post this. I'm torn on whether or not I want to watch the other one because I had told people initially I was going to watch the, and I'm going to mess this up because I can't remember, DKD TV, is that right? I said initially I was going to watch that explanation. That was the one that I started and then turned off. A lot of people said, don't watch that one, watch bookish theories. So I said, I'll just watch both. Then everybody will be happy. But Roscoe's learning, that's impossible. 
So RM says, I'm going to do me. Well, that's not what he says, but do you. I see the references now. I am curious about this theorist. Um, I think it's pretty fascinating. And you know me, I love decoding stuff. I love learning all this stuff. But for me, this sparked a whole different conversation. You know, the couch is a place for fun and like enjoying BTS together. You know, I'm Roscoe, I'm the BTS Explorer. I'm essentially your BTS buddy. Like that's, I think, feel like that's what this has become. I'm your BTS buddy. And some of you work and you listen to my videos, you listen to me in my random stream of consciousness that just happens. Um, and it just feels like you're watching BTS with a buddy. And I think that's pretty cool. But I also feel like maybe there's, you know, other avenues for us to explore in helping each other get better. Be better. Am I way off here? You know, like, are a lot of you watching and rolling your eyes? Or am I not making, I don't know. I don't know. I just, there's so much. Ah! It's one o'clock in the morning. I'll throw that out there too. I'm Kevin McAllister and Annie's gone. And I'm just rambling. I should go live right now. Nobody knows. I should go completely rogue and just go live. I'm not going to do that. It's not so good. I think this was interesting. I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad I got to learn what was behind the video. And this was really just a test bed for the new software. So we'll see how it turns out. As always, I'm Roscoe, your BTS buddy. Look out for each other. We have a long journey ahead of us.